<laughs> Help me! On the rack, all of us stretch, broken. Mr. Prentice, Mr. Prentice, are you all right? The tormentor shapes us, makes us. What for? Mr. Prentice, Mr. Prentice. Mr. Prentice. Mr. Prentice. The tormentor. His is the hand that makes. His is the hand that wounds. His, His is the, the house, house of, of pain. pain. Mr. Mr. Prentice, Prentice. Up. promise me, promise, give some account of me. No, no, destroy them, destroy them all. Doctor, Mr. Prentice. Prentice, er kommt wieder zu sich. Prentice? Eine nutzlose Belastung für uns. Prentice, come on. What? It's all right. Oh Gott. Ja. So ist gut. So ist gut. Siehst du, Konstanz, du hast dich geirrt. Elma. Yes. I thought I was... It's all right now. You're safe. Oh ja, yeah. wir sind alle sicher. What's that? It's Constance. There are just the three of us. Just the three? Und bald wird es nur zwei sein, hoffentlich. What did you say? Halt's Maul, Constance. Ich sage, was ich will. Dann sag's doch auf Englisch. Elmar, the ship. What's happened to her? Gone. She's gone. Look behind you. There. That's the last you'll see of the Lady Zane. Here, Prentice. Water. Make the most of it. There's no more. How long can we go without? I don't know. Depends on how much you want to live. If you want to live badly enough, you'll find ways of staying alive. But without water, we... It doesn't have to be water. There are other things. Blood. What? Blood? Blood will keep you alive. You're insane. Those girls, drink their blood. They'll keep you alive. Oh, you're right, he's insane. You lie nice and still in the bottom of the boat. One comes down to see what's going on. He comes closer. You make a grab, catch him, break his neck, and then... It, it's impossible, of course it is. I know a man was wrecked in the South Seas. Three weeks he was in a boat, no water. But he kept himself alive like that. Only trouble was, he got himself a real taste for it. You know what I mean? Don't listen to him. <laughs> I don't believe you. When you're thirsty, you will. It won't come to that. We'll get picked up. Oh, yes! Here comes the ship now! What? what? And another! Ships all around us coming to pick us up! The whole ocean's full of them! Halt's Maul! Halt's Maul! Es kommt der Tag, da uns nicht mehr unmöglich ist! Ich sagte, halt die Schnauze! No more talk like that! No more! Again. Almost had it. But you miss. The next one that comes. That's what you keep saying. Next time. You'll see. No. It's no good. Es wird nichts. Es geht nicht. Prentiss, do you agree? Es bleibt ihm keine Wahl. Talk in English, damn you. You have no choice, Mr. Prentice. Prentice. 
No. Amos! You have to, Prentice. I won't do it. It's, it's monstrous. There's nothing else we can do. We're not animals. It is our only chance. For two of us, at least. I can't. If you won't draw lots, Mr. Prentice, then we'll choose you. No! Not like this. Come on. Keep back. No, I've got a knife. You don't have the strength to use no, it. I'm warning you. No, I can't. Try me. Hood off. Hood off. Stop. Stop now. If we do it, it must be done properly. Fairly. We must be civilized. <laughs> civilized like gentlemen. Yes. Like men. Brentis, draw lots. It's the only way. All right. These All three right. coins. These three coins here. Mark one of them with your knife. I put them in my scarf. Then we each take one. Whoever has the marked coin, he will... He will be the one. Agreed? Yes. Just get on with it. All right. Take one. Prentice. No. Not me. That means... No! You! Come and get me, the two of you! Scared are you? Scared, no. fellas! No. Your knife! Your knife! We're not animals! We're men! We're not animals! Not animals! Brought the food. Just put it down there. Is he well? Better than he was. Looks like he'll be waking up again sooner. You'd better get back on deck. Keep an eye on the animals. Master, they say... Uh, what? The men, <clears throat> they say to <clears throat> me... He's coming now. Mm. Go on, we don't want you to be the first thing to see. But, Master... What's the matter with you? Get up, I tell you. Frighten the poor bugger to death. Helma. That's the third time you've called me that. I keep telling you my name is Montgomery. <laughs> Montgomery? That's right, you're good Samaritan. Ah, Montgomery. Yes, I, I remember. There, there was someone else here. Was there? Looking down at me. A, a face. It, it, it well, was... that would have been my servant. Now then, you think you could eat something? No. You must. You've had quite an ordeal. It's just some soup and bread. In a moment. See that you do. Doctor's orders. You're a doctor. You could say that. I didn't give much for your chances. You were in a bad way when we picked you up. God knows how long you've been alone in that boat. Alone? Yes. Or was there someone else with you then? Helma. <sighs> Never mind. Don't talk about it now. Maybe later if you feel up to it. <laughs> What's that noise? Noise? Animals. Oh, nothing for you to worry about. Rest's what you need, and food. Damn it, what's he doing? Montgomery. Alone. What happened to the others? I discovered my uncle's narrative some days after his rather sudden death. As his nephew and sole heir, I had begun the somewhat arduous task of sorting through his many papers, when I came upon this book, written in his own hand, at the bottom of a large trunk. The trunk was filled with cases of butterflies and moths, obviously collected during his journeys through the tropics. I have ascertained that there was indeed a steamship called the Ipecacuanha, that sailed from South America with a jaguar and other animals on board, and that it would probably have been in that part of the ocean where my uncle's ship went down. It may well have picked him up after the wreck of the Lady Vane. 
but I can find no record of a man named Montgomery being on board, nor his strange-looking servant. And in view of my uncle's account of what followed, I really expect to find none. Oh, it's good to be up on deck at last. It's becoming unbearable down there. Yes, this crate's not really equipped for carrying passengers. Not human ones, anyway. <laughs> Where's she bound? Java, Sumatra. What about you? Home. England. I uh, haven't been there in ten years. I've been away for two. I can't wait to get back. Yes, I sometimes think I wouldn't mind seeing the old place again. You've no plans to go back? No, my home's out here now. That's where they're taking me. And I thought you were the ship's doctor. This ship hasn't got a doctor. I'm a passenger like you. Oh, I see. Uh, where is it? Your home. An island. It's about a, a week away, I'd say. Can What's its name? Anyone? I don't know. I don't think it's got one. What is going on back there? Oh, Maling, what's he got himself into now? I'd better go and see. Get him off! Get him off! Oh, look what he did! I went for his throat, bloody animal! I'm bleeding! My face, you bastard! Teach him! Leave him alone! Well, look what he did to me! Ain't gonna get away with that! Keep away, yes. sir! Ah. Oh. Anybody else want to try? Hey, was. Looking after the animals. Going on. Back to work, a lot of you. Move! Montgomery. If you lay hands on one of my crew again. You tell your crew to keep their hands off my assistant, Davis. Captain Davis to you, mister. And I don't need you to tell me to keep my crew in order. Someone needs to. That man's a passenger. Yeah. God help me. I wish I'd never agreed to take either of you, all you stinking animals. Oh, this is my ship. I'll do and say what I like. Leave him, Montgomery. He's drunk. Uh, what's new? What's that? What's that you said? You! Cast away! Are you referring to me? Not enough to have him and his bloody animals. I get lumbered with you and If you don't mind, Captain. Clean ship, this was. Respectable ship. <laughs> and a good crew. <laughs> good enough to have took you on board. That's enough. You and that bloody devil of yours. I'm warning you. Don't, Montgomery. He's not worth it. How right you are. What are you, Hey, You're nothing! A piece of bloody flotsam! <laughs> Shut up! Shut your bloody noise! Shut up! I heard something in the water. It jumped. It went down again. What did Malene? Something. Black. Silver. Big. Did you see it, Prentice? No. Malene would. Sees things in the dark. You and I can't. Why... Why did the crew show such animosity towards Malene? Not exactly a pretty sight, is he? Well, I... Yeah? Well, there is something a little unsettling about him. <laughs> He's a good man. Oh, I'm sure he is. I'm telling you, he is. It doesn't do to judge a man by his looks. Oh, I know that. I know that, all right. He chose you, Mr. Prentice. No. Not like, like this. this. Come on. What was that? What? You were saying? Oh, just, uh, if there's one thing I've learned on my travels, it's that. Always look for what lies beneath the surface. Yes. No drink? No, thanks, I don't. Well, that's probably very wise. It's very wise indeed. As you can see, I'm not a very wise man. Not at all. What are you doing on your travels? Studying animals, insects. You're a naturalist. Mm. It's an expensive hobby. I've no family to speak of. Uh, my father was in business. He... Left you well provided for. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm not passing any judgment. Good luck to you and good health. Uh, it's all chance. One man's born with money, another isn't. One man makes a success of his life, another throws everything away. Wise man or fool, no one's to blame. Pure chance. Accident. Whole damn thing. Like me finding you, saving your life. It's an accident. 
There's no rhyme or reason to it, no meaning. You really think so? Don't you? You're a I... naturalist, aren't you? One of the Darwin Brigade. No, I grant you. Natural selection, that is a form of chance. Exactly. We're all of us one big accident. But then again, when one studies nature and sees the patterns that exist in plants and animals, the whole process of life itself, <laughs> I... <laughs> You ought to talk with Moreau. That's the kind of thing he comes out with. Who's Moreau? He's a man I work for on the island. He's full of that sort of talk. He is. It goes beyond me. I suppose I'm pretty poor company for him. There are just the two of you? Yes, and Malang, of course. Though his conversation tends to be rather limited. What does Moreau do on this island? He's, he's a naturalist. Yeah. Devoted his life to it. Did he won't meet him. Eight bells. Time to turn in. Coming? I think I'll stay up here a while longer. Well, Ling will keep you company, won't you? Yes. Make sure he comes below when you do. Don't leave him up on deck alone. I wouldn't put anything past this crew. It comes from down there. What? The dark. The deep. Black. Silver. It has no name. Tell your men. I'll tell them what I like, mister. I don't want that creature dropped in the ocean. You can all drop in the bloody ocean for all I care. Drop it in and drown. Are you there, Montgomery? Yes, Mo! Tell them to be careful. I have told them. Go away. We'll have ourselves a clean ship again soon. You want any help, Montgomery? No, thanks. That jaggy was the last of them. Is that all, mate? Yes. Come on, then. I'm on my way. Before you go. I just want Don't to say... Don't say anything, nothing to be said. All the same, I'm... Goodbye. That's all, and good luck. What are you waiting for? Nothing coming now! <laughs> say hello to England for me! I will. You two. What? Get off my ship. What do you mean? I'm cleaning this ship out, and you're going with the rest of them. You can't! I bloody well can. I never picked you up. I never wanted you on board. This isn't a passenger ship. Captain Davis is... Hey! Belay there! There's another one to come. What's that? Your friend. Take him with you. This is monstrous. We can't. Who says? I say. We've no use for him. <laughs> Neither have I. It looks as though we've no alternative, Captain. Take him, lads. What are you Wait, doing? Throw him over. <laughs> Captain Davis, please. I'm sending him over. Pick him up or not, as you like. Damn you, Captain. For God's sake. Over the side. I have discovered that after leaving South America with its cargo, the steamship Ipecacuanha, under a Captain Davis, was never seen or heard of again, lost somewhere in the ocean during its voyage to the far east. We can only guess at its fate. But we must assume that as my uncle refers in his narrative to this vessel and its captain by name, it did indeed pick him up after the wreck of the Lady Vane. We must also assume that he was at some point deposited on this island he writes of, for he must have lived somewhere during the time before his eventual rescue and return home. And there is indeed such an island in that region, I've researched this with the utmost care. It is called Noble Island. But it is, and to all human knowledge always has been, completely uninhabited. Mr. President. Yes? As you appear to have been hoisted on us, you may as well make yourself useful. Uh, of course, but I, I'd like to change out of these... Help Montgomery transfer the rest of the animals to their cages. Uh, Mr. Moreau. Uh, doctor. I'm a doctor. I'll see you later at supper. Make sure you lock everything, Montgomery. Yes. Ten years and he still doesn't trust me. Uh, give me a hand with these and I'll find you some dry clothes then. Ming, don't just stand there. Come on. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> He's scared of them. <laughs> Can't say I blame him. What's Moreau want with them all? It's part of his work. He built this place himself. Not the compound. We built it together, just the two of us. And what about the natives, the ones I saw down on the beach? The... 
Oh, they're not from here. The island was uninhabited when we came. Moreau brought them later. From where? Unlike any people I've ever encountered. What do you think you're doing, Ling? Easy with them! Uh, sorry, Master. <laughs> Bloody fool. I'll take my whip to you next time, you understand? Yes, Master. I've never had to use it on him yet. The threat's enough. This is the hand that burns. You can be sure it is. Uh, right, that's done now. Let's go across to the house. Fancy a bite to eat? I'm famished. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what was that he said? What? Meline, just now. Oh, I don't know, some nonsense or other. Don't worry yourself about it. Mr. Prentice? I'm not that well acquainted with it, I'm afraid. I've never really had much time for music. Ah, one should always have time for music. Music is the peak of human achievement. It's the voice of the soul. It must be I haven't got one then. It can reach such heights of perfection. Those heights for which we all strive. Until it starts to run out of steam. <laughs> Montgomery tells me you're a naturalist, Mr. Prentice. Uh, well, yes, I... Oh, he doesn't drink, either. You've spent some years travelling, studying. That's right. I was on my way home Well, when... perhaps you may be able to assist in my work here. It could be some time before you're able to leave. Ships don't call here very often. What, what is your work, exactly? I would take time to explain. More time than I can spare at present. Spend a few days acquainting yourself with our dwelling here and... After that, perhaps we'll discuss the matter further. Hmm? Very well. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get on. Uh, feel free to wander within the compound, but if I were you, I wouldn't venture outside unless Montgomery's with you. Are there wild animals? None that's dangerous. Only the jungle's rather deep, and it's easy to lose one's bearings. I don't want to waste valuable time organising rescue parties. Montgomery, I'll require your assistance. I'll be over in a minute. Now. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Prentice. Good night. Moreau. Moreau. Where have I heard that name before? Are you feeling quite well, Montgomery? Never better. Voyage did me good. Perhaps it's just the liquor, then. I can hold it. What are you driving at? I'm simply concerned for your welfare. <laughs> it's the first time. I suppose Prentice is more to your liking. Hmm? An abstainer, not you. I have no feelings about Mr. Prentice one way or the other. Although he may well prove to be an asset. Indeed he may. If only he knew where he'd been washed up. I'll be the one to explain the situation to him, mind you. Do you understand? Good. Go and get some sleep. I thought you wanted my help. No, you need to rest. This work requires a steady hand. Damn! Damn you! Moreau! Of course, that's it. Yes. There, my girl. There. All's well. All will be well. <laughs> Captain Davis, there's something ahead. The devil. Stand ahead, Captain. Get him off my ship. Oh, I wish I'd meet you. We gotta never. change course! What is it? I don't know, it's dark, huge! Change course, Captain! Blow them off! Blow them all off! He's bloody drunk! We're heading straight for it! Down to the bottom! Down to hell! <laughs> 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 
What's that? What in God's name is that? That was probably some animal out in the jungle. Moreau said there weren't any animals. Nothing dangerous, he said. And it wasn't coming from the jungle. It was coming from over there, from his laboratory. How oh, do you know? I couldn't sleep for the noise, so I went for a walk, and I heard it coming from in there. He's doing some kind of work on animals, isn't he? He'll tell you about it himself. I'll go and see him, then. You can't. Uh, he's sleeping. He's working all night. Well, then I'll go and have a look in his laboratory. No. He won't allow it. Why not? What is there to hide? Nothing. Look, just be patient. He said he'd explain everything to you in a few days, didn't he? Now, bear with him. This is his island, you know. He makes the rules here. He likes things done his way. And I can tell you, he's not a man to be crossed. There was a Moreau. A physiologist of that name was working in London some 30 years ago. And it appears that he was highly regarded and respected by his contemporaries. Not only as a man of science, but also as a man of wide learning and culture. For a time, he was professor of zoology at a famous city institute, but... But then, quite abruptly, he gave up his post and left the country. Of where he went, and what became of him thereafter, there appears to be no record. Pain. There must be pain. Out of pain comes... You will understand. You'll come to know. The pain is nothing. Nothing. That was over more. Thank you, no. I have really no appetite. Don't let that noise get to you. I hardly notice it now. You get used to everything in time. Does he always work at night? Night and day. Once he starts, never rests. That's why he came to the island. No interruptions. And why did you come here? Chance? Accident. He helped me out of a fix. I had to... Get away. From what? Isn't there always something? Doesn't everyone have something they need to... I mean, what about you? Well, what do you mean? That little boat of yours. <laughs> but we, we'd sunk. I, I, I was... There's always something. I've seen him before. Who? Moreau. Go on. When I was a boy, quite young, actually, I, my father took me to a zoological lecture in London. I don't remember much about the lecture itself, of course, except the name of the man who delivered it, Dr. Moreau. Really? I was too young to follow much of what he said, but I remember him and his voice, a kind of passion, a, a power. I can remember that. Oh, it's quite a coincidence, huh? Yes, I wonder. What do you mean? Well, I remember listening to him, being almost overwhelmed by him. I wanted to have that knowledge and understanding of the world, that same power. My own interest in natural science was born then. In a way, I suppose all that I've done since has been because of him. <laughs> I, do you see? I, but for him, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Fate, eh? Destiny! Oh, that's a good one, Brendan. That's a bloody good one. Go away! He doesn't want you. He's, he's the hand that moves. He's, he's the fire that burns. Go away! Go away! Link! Uh, so? What are you doing, Malink? Nothing, sir. Looking for you, sir. <clears throat> Why? What do you want? 
Mr. Montgomery sent me to find you. I'm simply taking a walk. I can't sleep. That's why Mr. Montgomery sent me. He says, would you care to join him? He's awake too, is he? He said the noise didn't disturb him. For a drink, sir. He knows I don't. He says a drink will help you to sleep, sir. I'll thank Mr. Montgomery for his offer, but tell him I decline. Very well, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, nothing, sir. Well, go and tell him, then. Oh. Well, sir. Sir? That noise on the other side of the gate. There it is again. You heard it? Y yes, sir. A noise. What is it? I don't know, sir. Some kind of animal? Yes, sir. An animal. It's gone now, sir. Yeah. I go on. Tell Mr. Montgomery, sir. An animal? Do you really think it's a good idea? I'm only going for a stroll. Well, the jungle's pretty deep. I won't get lost. Wait for an hour or two until I finish what I have to do. It'll be too I... hot, then. I want to go out while the morning's cool. I'm tired of kicking my heels around here all day. I ought to have a word with Moreau first. Moreau's not my keeper, is he? I'm not his prisoner? Of course not. Then there's nothing to stop me, is there? I'll see you later. Prentice! There's a path through the jungle. Keep to it, eh? I can look after myself. What? Keep to the path. Where is that damn path? What? There's no path that I can see. <laughs> Why did you allow him to go? How could I stop him? He's suspicious enough as it is. Yeah. I suppose no harm can come of it. What if he comes across one of our friends? Well, that's not very likely. As long as he doesn't go far, they keep well away from here. Do they? Well, Ling told me one of them was outside the compound last night. Really? That's interesting. It's about time you told him. I will in a few days. When I'm finished with this. And I'll do better than tell him. I'll show him. She'll be ready then. Listen, Montgomery. Listen to her. She has a voice. No. No. <laughs> Who's that? Who's there? Maling, is that you? You. Huh? Huh? Who are you? Man. What? I am a man. <laughs> I don't know what it might have been, some animal. It spoke. You imagined it did. I heard it. A voice. Deep. Like Milling's voice. Only... It must have been one of the natives there. But the way it ran. What of it? It was big. Too big for a man. The shadows in the jungle. They can play tricks. I know what I heard. I know what I saw. Well, that's more than I do. Montgomery, uh -huh. you know what it was. Why won't you tell me? 
What's going on here? There's nothing going on. Oh, damn you! Where are you going? To see Moreau. You can't. He's working. Yes. Now, what kind of work? What's he doing in there? He'll tell you when he's ready. He'll tell me now. You're not going in. Get your hands off me! You are not going in. But, please. Now, look. You've been through it these last few weeks. Your nerves are on edge. Go and rest. I can't. I'll give you something to help you sleep. Oh, God. I saw it. Trust me. What's he doing in there? Animals. No. Animals. Who's there? Who is it? Not animals. No! No! Man. Who's there? Sir. Oh, Ling. What do you want? Food, sir. Thank you. Just put it on the table. Ling. Where's Moreau? Dr. Moreau is resting, sir. Resting? Yes, sir. Thank you, Maling. That's all. We now come to what I call the second part of my uncle's narrative. Up to this point, all that he describes as having taken place could have some basis in actual events, even if the perception of those events has been somewhat distorted by his obviously distraught state of mind. But to find any rational explanation for the events he describes subsequently, I confess I find myself at a complete loss. From the moment my uncle tells of his decision to enter Moreau's laboratory, to the point where the narrative ends, all... all appears to be nothing more than the ravings of a haunted and broken mind bordering on the insane. Moreau? Dr. Moreau? What has he done to you? What are you doing? What is this? Get away from me. What has he done? Come on, outside. Tell me. I've seen enough. Come on, come on, quick, before he hears. Where the hell did you go in? Why couldn't you wait? For what? Until he'd finished, he was going to show you. Show me that. That creature, it, it's human. Or it was once. No. I saw it. You don't know what you saw. A human being cut, mutilated. You've got it wrong. I know now, Maling. Those on the beach, that... that in the jungle, all human once until he got his hands on them. Let me explain What something. kind of a monster is he? Will you listen? Me. He wants me in there, too. Don't let me But I won't. I won't be one of his experiments. Shut up! I won't. For God's sake, Prentice. Oh, you bloody fool. Keep back. Give me my gun. I mean it. I don't think I won't use it. I've killed before. What do you think happened to those men in the boat, eh? All right. So what do you intend to do now? I'm getting away from here, as far as I can. This happens to be an island. I've survived on my own before. I can live out there till a ship comes. It could be a long time. And if either of you come looking for me, I'll kill you. Now, we're going over to the gates, and you're going to open them and let me out. All right? All right. Whatever you say. You let him take your gun. He took me by surprise. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's taken us both by surprise. Indeed he has. <clears throat> what are we going to do? Fetch him back, wouldn't you say? I think that might be a good idea. 
Yes, I'd better take my gun, hadn't I, seeing that you've been relieved of yours? <laughs> Where they're heading, don't you, Moreau? Yes, I know. This was bound to happen. Nothing was bound to happen. If you hadn't been so careless. <laughs> Do we follow? Yes, we follow. Go on, Milling. describes the creatures he claims to have encountered in the cave. What he says struck him most of all was a, a sense of deformity about them. As his eyes grew used to the dark, he saw that the cave was filled with these people, each one having its own peculiar characteristics, some small and sleek, some large and heavy with powerful arms and shoulders. All were human, and yet, and yet he writes, there was something about them too, of the animal. These are creatures from a nightmare, creations of some fantastic delusion, that is all. They're not real, no, they cannot, could never be. Not to go on all fours. That is the law. Are we not men? 
not to suck up drink. That is the law. Are we not men? Not to eat flesh or fish. That is the law. Are we not men? Not to claw the bark of trees. That is the law. Are we not men? Well, listen. I hear you say the law. We'd better go in and get him out. Not yet. Wait. In a while. Why? Let them finish. His is the hand that plays. His is the hand that wounds. His is the hand that heals. His is the voice that commands. His is the eye that sees. The lightning flash. The thunder roar. The wind. The heat of the sea, the fire that burns. We are the stars in the sky. Mm-hmm. I am the seer of the law. Mm-hmm. If you come to live with us, you must know the law. Learn the law. Obey the law. Evil are the punishments of those that break the law. None escape. None escape. None escape. None, none. I did a wrong thing. I stopped talking. I made noises. He took me to the house of pain. Uh, he is great. He is good. He is great. He is good. Let me see your hand. What? Your hand and let us see. He has little nails. <laughs> Not close. It is well. He is a man. Stop! He has broken a law. Huh? Huh? He has a gun. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't see. Wait. He comes to kill. No. Not to drink blood. That is the law. Listen, no, I'm evil. Are the punishments of those that and break the law? You and don't understand. He must go to the house of pain. This is the house of pain. No. This is the No. He is here. He is great. He is good. His is the eye that sees. His is the voice that commands. Leave him. He has a gun. He has broken the law. Did you hear what he said? Go back. (laughs) Come over here, apprentice. I'm not going with you. If I gave them the word, they'd bring you to it. Not while I've got this. For God's sake, friends. I know what's going on. That thing in your laboratory, these people here. You're not going to do the same to me. I've no intention of doing anything to you. You won't get the chance. What chance do you think you'd stand if you fired that? Give it to me. No. All right. Here. Take my gun. What are you doing? I'm showing Mr. Prentice that we mean him no harm. Take it. (laughs) There. Now Montgomery and I are going back to the compound. You may follow us if you wish. I should if I were you. I promise you if you return with us, I'll explain everything to you. You'll find it's not what you think. No harm will come to you. You have my word. Well... All right, but keep ahead of me, all the way. As you wish. Come on, Montgomery. (laughs) Does he go to the house of pain? No, he does not. (laughs) But he has broken the law. law. I make the law. Mine is the voice that commands. Mr. Prentice. Go on. I'll follow you. Very well. Come, Montgomery. Wait, with me. Yes, master. <laughs> what does this mean? He came with a gun. He goes with a gun. His is the voice that commands. But the other did not listen. No. He broke the law and he goes free. <laughs> what, yes. what, what does it mean? Yes. It means... What, what? Uh, uh, I will what? think. What? Uh, it means... He goes unpunished. unpunished. He goes free. He goes free. free. He goes free. He goes free. Why? He goes free. Some tea, Prentice? You agree now that the creature in my laboratory is the jaguar? Yes. Good. It's so cut. So mutilated. I've never seen anything. 
please. Spare me any sentimental moralizing. It has no place here. Is your tea to your liking? It's fine. Very well. Now I shall explain. Oh. 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 Poor bloody beast. What's he made of you? Huh? Meat on a butcher's slab. Oh. He was not a butcher, though. Oh, no. I'm an artist. That's what he said to me oh. once. You're a work of art. It is creation. Oh. An artist. But I'll tell you what he really thinks he is. God oh. Almighty. What you have seen in my laboratory and out there in the jungle is the result of 20 years of research and study and experiment. Experiment into the plasticity of living forms. <laughs> Vivisection. No more than that, much more. I have discovered not only how to reshape the body, but how to alter its chemical composition, to stimulate growth in dormant areas of the brain, modify instinct, to change a living creature in its most intimate structure. <laughs> Yeah, he makes them, and he casts them aside. Oh. Not good enough for him. Start again. Get it right this time. Oh. But he'll never get it right. Never. It just go on and on. There's no end to it. Oh. And for what? What's the bloody point of it all? You may as well ask nature to justify its work. But where is it all leading? Well, must it lead anywhere? Must there be a conclusion? I am engaged in the pursuit of knowledge, Mr. Prentice, of understanding. And I pursue it endlessly and without remorse. When one studies nature, when one undertakes such a task as mine, one must become as ruthless and pitiless as nature itself. Not to eat flesh or fish, that is the law. Not to chase other men, not to root in the earth. That is the law. Yeah, that is the law. For some. No, the law is for all. You say. Where are you going? It is dark. Yes, dark. And I go. Are we not men? I go free into the dark. Not to drink blood. That is the law. Are we not men? Not to eat flesh. That is the law. Are we not Men. The history of the human race is the history of our struggle to be free of our base instincts, to rise clear of them, like Daedalus rising from the earth towards the sky. We struggle to destroy the animal within us and attain a, a purity of mind and spirit. And those creatures of mine out there, they too are now engaged in that struggle. But I fail. Each time I see it grow in them. Something at their very centers I cannot touch. Cravings, instincts, animal desires, the mark of the beast, a darkness in their very souls that evades me. It stares out at me in mockery at my failure. But I do not despair. I go on letting the work lead me drawing me closer, nearer to the centre, the heart of it all. And each time I dip a living creature into the bath of burning pain, I say, this time I will burn out all the animal. <laughs> I've explained enough to you now. Is it all clear? Yes, it's clear. And I think you understand, a little at least. You will come to understand more in time. It's late, you must be tired. I'll go and get some sleep. Mm. Good night then. Good night. Uh. Yeah.
Their law? Moreau taught it to them. What for? There's a way of keeping them in check. Stop them from giving in. And does it? Most of the time. It's a struggle for them, though. Sometimes they go under. And then they're taken to the house of pain. Yes. That and Moreau are the two things they dread. So, he rules them with pain and fear. Not much different to anywhere else, is it? Isn't that how we're all kept in check? What? What? Here. See? What do you want? Look! What's she got there? I found it in there, in the bushes, hidden. God's name, what is it? Oh, the pig. What's left of it? I smelled it. Badness, wickedness under the leaves. Was this you? No, no, not me. I saw you, the two masters I brought in. Not to eat flesh. That is the law. Bad, wicked, evil are the punishment. Come on, we'd better go and tell Moreau. What will he do? I don't know. Nothing as serious as this has ever happened before. Call them all together, I suppose, and find out which of them did it. And then make sure they don't do it again. The house of pain. <laughs> Not to drink blood. That is the law. That is the law. That is the law. My uncle writes, Imagine the scene if you can. We three, with our misshapen attendant, standing at the bottom of the hill and surrounded by this circle of crouching and gesticulating monstrosities, flinging dust and stones upon their heads. Some almost human, some so strangely distorted as to resemble nothing but the denizens of our wildest dreams. At each sounding of the horn, they writhed and groveled before Moreau, as if engaged in some terrible act of worship. What kind of mind could imagine such a scene? It is madness. Madness. Enough! Where is the sayer of the law? I am here. The law has been broken. Not! to eat flesh or fish. That is the law. And the law has been broken. Yes! One of you has broken that law. Which one? Which one of you has done it? Don't think you can hide from me. Mine is the eye that sees. And there will be punishment. Mine is the hand that makes. Mine is the hand that won't. Bring me the transgressor. I warn you. There is one not here. What? One not present. He went out. He did not come back. When was this? Three nights. It is him. He is the one. He is the one. He must be found. Hunt him. Find him. The one who breaks the law goes back to the house of pain. Not escape. He must go to the house of pain. No, help me. This is the hat. The house of pain. Help me. Help me. No. 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 You must come with me! No! No! Not escapes! 
You must go back to the House of Pain. The House of Pain. No, no. Please, no. Help me. Help us. Prentice. Why the hell did you do that? Prentice, answer me. Where do you think you're going? Come back here. Do as I command. In the days that followed, my uncle writes, I fell into a morbid state, deep and enduring, which has left permanent scars on my mind. Seeing nothing but the island and its suffering and painful disorder, I lost faith in the sanity of the world. A blind fate, a vast, pitiless mechanism seemed to cut and shape the fabric of existence. What's it all for? If there was some point, some aim, I could understand it. Poor buggers, all of them, struggling to hold on. My poor uncle. What privations he must have suffered. What agonies of mind and body must have driven him to create this hellish fantasy. But there's no point, no aim, no direction. Just his damned curiosity, that's all. Going for us too. The same. A struggle not to go under. This is the confession of his own despair. He writes of lost souls. For he himself had become a lost soul. Observe the force of nature, Prentice. A vast, pitiless, awesome power. It would sweep us from the island, from the face of the earth, with no more thought than you or I would give to swatting a fly. But without cruelty, Prentice, without malice. I was angry with you for what you did the other day, but not now. Though I am still a little concerned about the possible consequences. What consequences? The undermining of my authority. <laughs> Your authority? Is that all? It's all they have. My authority, my law. That's their only bond. I sincerely hope that your action has not weakened it. I don't give a damn. You intrigue me, Prentice. I'm curious as to your motives. For what? Killing that creature. That's quite simple. I felt... Sorry for it. I wanted to save it from your torture. I am not a torturer. I inflict pain on them, yes, but like nature, I inflict it without cruelty or malice. And unlike nature, it is done for their benefit. The eye that sees the lightning flash, Frank. the thunder roar, is... Is the wind in cold. the trees? Well, is, is the deep you salt sea? Both. Is, is it the fire me. that burns? Is the stars in the, in the on. sky? A drinkling. Is, is the hand me. that kills? That's your that nonsense. Is, is the house a drink a sin? Is, Look is at me, Jamie. Stop that. Is, is the I'm your master. That wounds. Is, I is, say. Is the hand that heals make you bloody listen to me. Animal! Bloody! Shake him! You! Shut him! And me! I've seen human cruelty, Prentice. It's the face of the beast that dwells in us all. In 1916, I served in Flanders as a medical officer. I saw what human beings can be reduced to through their own bestiality. I work to rise above that, to cut that from us forever. You ask me for a reason. Isn't that reason enough? Perhaps, at the beginning. Perhaps that's how you began, but now 
here on this island, all I can see is what? Despair. Madness. No reason at all. A wicked thing! He has killed! A thing! He should have gone! That is the law! The law is broken! Oh, there th is no law! Oh, 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 oh. 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 I want you to understand, Prentice. Understand what? My work. It mustn't finish with me. It's too important. There must be someone to carry it on. Well, what about Montgomery? Montgomery is nothing more than an errand boy. It's you, Prentice. You must carry it on. Surely you see that now. That's why you came here. You will be my successor. <laughs> the one. There's no one else. When he sees what can be done, I'll finish it tonight. And tomorrow he'll... Yes. Yes. Montgomery! Yeah. Ling? Get up, quick! Oh, what is oh, it? For God's sake, Montgomery, come on! He's gone! I know, it's my fault. I shouldn't have hit him. You, you hit Moreau? What? You just said you... No, I meant Ling. Moreau's gone. I've searched the whole compound. I can't find him anywhere. Oh, what about the laboratory? Not there. Neither is the Jaguar. Come on, come and see for yourself. What a mess. This is how you found it? Yes. Door wide open. Everything turned upside down. What about the gates? They're open as well. They were closed last night. Ling went over the fence. What? He ran off. I hit him. I was drunk. There's blood. What? Here. On the table and, and on the floor. Still fresh. What, what are you doing? We've got to go look for him. I will. When I've had a drink. Montgomery! <laughs> not to chase other men. That is the law. Are we not men? <laughs> not, not to drink blood. That is the law. Where is everyone? Are we not? Where? Where are all the others? Are we not men? Did you hear me? Gone. All gone. Where? God. Have you seen Moreau? I'm looking for Moreau. It is, it is the hand that makes. Yes, where is he? It is, it is the hand that. Uh, Answer uh, me! Uh, 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 I am the sayer of the law. Here come all that be new. Oh, God help us. God help us all. I am the sayer of the law. Oh, something's happened, all right. Something's going on. But I'm damned if I know what. The cave was empty. Except for him. Couldn't get any sense out of him sitting there like an idiot. You're sure you searched everywhere? Yes. I've been out all day, haven't I? It's like he's vanished. Maybe that's what happened. He spirited himself away. He <laughs> talks sense. <laughs> Find another explanation. You can't have looked everywhere. All right, I didn't. Neither would you. If you'd have been out there. What do you mean? Oh, it was so quiet. So bloody still and quiet. As if everything was waiting. You got scared. Damn right. I lost my nerve. When it started to go dark, anybody would have done. Put that bottle down. Stop drinking for a minute. I'm all right. We've got to think what to do. You think? 
I'll drink. Put it down, I said. Give me that. You've had enough. I've had enough of you, Mr. Bloody High and Mighty. I'm not taking orders from you. Shut up. Listen. What? I heard... I heard something. Outside. Oh, I didn't. Listen. There's someone there. Who's there? Moreau? Watch out. No! Master! Mling! You don't hit me, Master. Don't. Mling, I, I... Oh, don't let him hit Mling, me! Mling, I'm sorry. No! What's the matter with you? Don't you see? He's scared of you. There's, there's no need. I was drunk. You're drunk now. It's all right. It's all right, Mling. He won't hit you again. I'll see you there. It's all right. It's all right. Now, start again, Mling. Take your time. I run into the jungle. The sky shouts, there is white fire. Go on, Mling. I run fast, far. I want to get away from the noise. I go where I have never been before. Many rocks. I climb them, find a hole. I go in. I am tired. I sleep. I wake, and it is light, quiet. I hear voices. Below me there are people. They do not see me. I listen. He is dead. dead. No, no, he breathes. The other is dead. She who bled and ran, screaming. He killed her. He cannot die. His is the hand that makes. I smell his blood. Blood? Blood. His blood. He wakes. Folks, we must go. Go, go. It was Moreau. Yes. Alive? Yes. The other was dead. She from the house of pain. She must have turned on him. Where is he? Still back there? I pull him into the cave. I cover him with leaves and then come here. We'd better go and bring him back. In the morning. Now. It'll be safer when it's light. He liked. could be dead by then. We go now. Hold him up. He's a bloody weight. It's not much further now. Stop. There are others here, close. I hear that they won't dare hurt us. I wouldn't be too sure. What do you want? You come to give us a hand? Get out of here. Go on. Damn them. Let's just carry on. I'll make them move. Hold on to him. What are you doing? I'll show them who's still must around here. Montgomery. You want a taste of this? The lightning flash! You'll make more trouble. Stop it! The thunder rock! For God's sake, The fire that Look back! Look at your Stop it! For God's sake, stop it! The fire that oh, back! <laughs> Who's there? Who is it? It's dark. I can't see. It's all right, Doctor. Uh, there's someone. Keep back. Moreau. <laughs> The law. I may. I am the law. Shh, quiet. You're safe now. Who is it? It's me, Prentice. Uh, uh, Prentice. Yes. I knew it would be you. Uh, what's that? It's just Montgomery. He's been drinking. Uh, a clown. A fool. Every king has his fool. And his heir. Every king has his heir, too. Don't talk. I have to. You must listen. I don't want to. For you, all this. No. I wanted you to see her. See what could be achieved. She wasn't ready. Too much pain. 
But I wanted you. It was for you. Don't put this on me. <laughs> Paper, records, all my work. Take them with you. Explain. You owe it to me. I owe it to you. Yes, you know it. It's why you came here. <laughs> Pro promise me. You must give some account of me. We have built Jerusalem. <laughs> In England's green of pleasure. <laughs> Why? I'm happy here. Get up, I said. More to sleep. Give your orders again. I only take orders from Moreau. He's dead. You hear me? Moreau's dead. Ah. Oh. So you'll take orders from me. Go and clean up. They won't have any respect for you if they see you like this. Who will? His people. We're going to see them. I'm calling a meeting. <laughs> Listen to the words of the law. His is the hand that makes. His is the hand that wounds. His is the eye that sees. He sees... You now. He watches you now and always. He is everywhere. And he has commanded me to tell you this. He has left his body. It was old and no longer of use to him. His body must be burned so that his spirit may be released to watch over you for all time. You will see him no more. But he will be with you in the trees and in the rivers, in the wind and in the waves. He has left you his law, and he has left me as keeper of the law. My voice is his voice. When I speak, it is him speaking to you, and I shall be obeyed. Fear him. Fear me. Fear the law. Fear the law. Fear the law. Fear the law. Supplies the boat will hold. As soon as it's dark, we'll get it down to the beach. It shouldn't take long. Provided they don't see us. The fire will keep them away. You hope. All we've got to do then is set fire to the compound. What for? I want it burned, all of it. There'll be nothing left of his work. If that's the way you want it. It is. Wh Where's Maling? Still down there by the funeral pile. Go and bring him back. We need his help. His spirit. Rises black into the air. They are coming! What? They come. They have killed the sayer of the law. Killed him? Yes. And now they say they will kill the others. No! We have tasted blood! 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 Blood!
Might have been. No, I locked the gates. Wise man. S save yourself. There was nothing I could. No. <sighs> Ling's dead. You were right. Did no good. Only got myself. Did for nothing. Maybe. But I couldn't leave him, could I? I had to try. All we can do. Try to make up for things. I'll get you back to the compound. No, no, don't remove me. I must. I don't know. Too late for that. Save yourself now. Get away from here. Out of this madhouse. Back to the real world. It's not all like this. Must be some good back there. Montgomery, please. Leave me. Let me lie here. Listen to the waves. Something about them. That sound. Peace. Don't let my work die. No purpose. None. Give some account of me. Upon his final return to England, and after he had recovered from his ordeal, my uncle never left his home again. He became an almost total recluse. He would spend long hours of solitude gazing out upon the wide, empty downs, or looking up at the night stars. And if ever I ventured to question him about that period on the island, he professed that he had no memory of it. What then am I to make of this so-called account? Mr. Prentice! <laughs> no purpose. None. Some account. You owe it to <laughs> me. Struggle. Suffer. Mr. Mr. Prentice! Prentice. <laughs> I do not know, and I do not wish to know. My uncle wrote this, I feel certain, during some moment of weakness when his delirium had returned to him. And I feel with equal certainty that he never intended his words to be read by another. It may well be that he had forgotten he had written them. Therefore, let them be forgotten. Mr. Prentice! Prentice, the hand that makes the house of pain. Mr. Prentice! Are you all right? Uh, nurse? Yes. I'm all right. Uh, no, 
No, back into bed. You're still very weak. Listen, nurse. Can you hear them? Who? Them. Outside. Let's close that window, Mr. Francis. No, they're out there, howling, crying. There's nothing outside, only... Animals. Beasts. All of them. No, they're just people. It's creatures everywhere. Amongst us. In us. All of us. You'll make yourself ill again. Waiting to strike. Waiting to pull us down. Let me I know. I see them. I hear them. Mine is the eye that sees. And I know what to do. There is a solution. These are words written by an isolated soul. A soul in despair. They can have no meaning for us. Let them be consigned to the flames. And so pass from all human knowledge. A simple solution. Final. We must destroy them. Destroy them all. First published in 1896, H.G. Wells' classic adventure story was dramatised by David Calcutt and starred Kenneth Cole as Montgomery. Neil Foster as Prentice's nephew, Garrard Green played Dr. Moreau, Peter Meakin, Captain Jones, Richard Mitchley played Helmar, Terry Malloy, Maling, Danny Schiller, Constance, Kim Wall played Prentice, Janet Dale played the nurse, and other parts were played by Alex Jones. The Island of Dr. Moreau was directed by Nigel Bryant.